Hi everyone, it's Kaylee here with Microsurvey and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Alan Frank. So Alan is the president of Johnson Frank and he is a second generation land surveyor. Um, Alan's dad was actually the number two purchaser of Starnet version one and Alan's been using the program since he's been in high school. So uh, I would say that they, they know what is going on with the program. Um, so today I wanted to uh, chat with Alan because he actually uses the program in kind of a non-conventional way. And I thought it would be interesting um, for our audience to hear a little bit more about that. Um, so they actually use Starnet to calculate from record data and kind of pre-plan their surveys uh, using Starnet. Um, so I'm going to let Alan take it away and tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, one of the things uh, that we like to do with it is is to calculate record data in that by using uh, Starnet start to traverse through your record maps, uh, it can basically get rid of the bases of bearings. And so if you have four or five maps with uh, four or five different bases of bearings uh, trying to calculate in that in CAD, you always have to make sure which base of bearings you're dealing with. We'll start it, we'll, we'll throw out the base of bearings because using the dot map on angle calc, uh, it will calculate the angles in between those bearings as, and then just run it like regular data. Um, and one of the great advantages of this that we've found is that if you have several maps and they don't all fit together perfectly, Starnet will pick out which maps are agreeing with each other, which maps don't, and it will generally point you towards what's fitting and what's not fitting. Um, the other thing that we like to do is uh, the dot measured bearing and measured distance uh, and the dot units, uh, chains, uh, meters, feet, will allow you to put in original GLO and BLM data directly into a, a pre-analysis or a pre-search a pre calc, not a pre-analysis, but a pre-search calc. Um, so we've been able to put uh, 1800s data directly in as well. Uh, and there's also a thing called the dot instrument where you can wait the old surveys for what they were. And then you can, as you survey, you bring your new survey data in and you can readjust and your search coordinate gets get better and better and better the more that you uh, survey. Uh, and we've retraced entire townships up in the Bridgeport, uh, California area using just this. Uh, uh, it looks like it was 1874 data and uh, we were able to find most of everything up there, which was actually done by uh, John A. Benson, the, the main Benson syndicate guy, which by some of your surveyor people will, will know what I'm talking about. When he actually did his work, he actually uh, did pretty good work when he was actually out there until he got fraudulent. <laughs> that might be a topic for another video. <laughs> that is a topic for a new, that's a topic for lots of discussions that they have at the, all the conferences. I can, I, I've never even thought to use uh, Starnet for that. Like you said, I've seen that type of thing done in CAD. I know, uh, Microsurvey CAD does have an input option where you can, if you're working in meters, you could, and you're looking at an, at an old map that had, mm -hmm. you know, units, something in feet, you can automatically put it in feet and it will kind of do the conversion on the fly. Right. But the really great thing about if you get this going in Starnet, as you find a point here or there, you can readjust and all your search coordinates get that much better. You can't oh, do that yeah. in CAD. Once you have a static CAD file, yeah, you can align and rotate but it doesn't pick things out. It doesn't start to readjust. Uh, and we found uh, when we find a couple points or we find some topo calls uh, on the original notes, the entire the entire township just gets a little bit better. And by the end of the survey, you're walking right up to these monuments. You're dialed. That, that, are, that are old stones. So it's really nice. Uh, and you can use this, like I said, we, we just finished a job in Fullerton that had three separate maps, but it wasn't old GLO stuff. It was three separate maps all on different bases of bearings. We put it all together. Uh, it was like two blocks, wasn't any real big deal, um, but it works great. And uh, and then you put your search coordinates in and, and improve it as you go. And it, it really makes our life a lot easier. There's some people, there are people who are hesitant to do it because it's not as easy. You're just used to typing in CAD and putting the data in. Um, so it is a little, you have to run a little bit and start it and add some more data, run it again. Uh, but once you get used to it, it's invaluable. Yeah, it's one of those workflows that they say uh, has the long-term dividends. <laughs> yes, yes, it very much is. Awesome. Well, that was super interesting. Thank you for sharing. Uh, if anyone has any questions about this type of workflow, can they reach out to you? Uh, yeah, that'd be just fine. Okay, oh, that's great. Do you have anything else you want to say, Alan, before we uh, before we get going? 
I'm glad you guys took over the program from Ron Sawyer and kept it going because I don't know what I'd do without it. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. I know it is probably at a premium, so thank you again, and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. You're welcome. Thank you.